Today we're going to begin the story about this little baby mink named Boone. If you haven't seen our previous video leading up to Boone's story, I highly recommend you pause this for a moment and click on the link in the description below so you can watch the story leading up to this video. It sets the stage in explaining how Boone came to be and what happened before his birth. If you have already seen the video I mentioned, I still recommend clicking on the link to rewatch the video as a quick refresher. One of the important events that led up to the creation of Boone was when I lost one of the best hunting mink I have ever owned, a special mink I called Fang. I knew that it would likely take me many years and a lot of good luck before I would find another mink anywhere close to as good of an all-round hunting partner as Fang was. So after losing Fang, I decided I wasn't going to wait around for luck to smile upon me. I was going to create my own luck. I needed to create a gene pool from which I could select the traits I was looking for in a hunting companion. So to create this little gene pool of ideal hunting mink, I started going to the fur farm and spent many long hours, day after day, testing mink so I could select the very best individuals to breed to. After literally months of work, I narrowed down the roughly 700 females and 700 males at the farm down to a select few who I would keep at my house for breeding. Rock. Without a doubt, the very best of those minks selected from the farm, and the mink destined to be the most important influence in my breeding program, was a big stocky buck I named Brock. Over the years, I've worked with a lot of amazing mink, each of which have had different strengths and skills. There was Roxy, who even though she was tamed as an adult, was surprisingly friendly with any human she met. There was Thate who was so easily trained that at times it seemed like I was working with a golden retriever. There was the infamous Washouche with his ridiculous confidence and out of this world prey drive. When it comes to Brock, I was very impressed from the beginning. He had a calm, deep confidence that was at a level I honestly never had seen before. Even Washouche with all his aggressive theatrics couldn't hold a candle to Brock's deep, rock solid confidence. Brock didn't need to show off with a big fancy display of aggression. In his mind, he was the boss and he knew it. Thanks to his deep-rooted confidence, there was no need to really tame Brock. He didn't see humans as a threat and he knew we weren't food. He basically saw us as an interesting creature to explore and play with. But when it came to prey, Brock was a completely different animal. Brock has a good, healthy prey drive, and that combined with his strong confidence makes him a hunting force to be reckoned with. Even Washouche, with his ridiculous prey drive, couldn't compare to Brock in his rock-solid confidence on game. Once when out hunting, Brock was totally blindsided by a large muskrat. He didn't even blink an eye and just grabbed the muskrat by the face and took it down like it was nothing more than a walk in the park. In addition to his confidence and natural tameness, Brock has also proven to be surprisingly easy to train. I haven't worked with him enough to honestly say if he's comparable to Thate with his golden retriever-like attitude, but I can say that he learns things exceptionally fast and retains everything he learns without much effort. Brock's most valuable attribute was his ability to consistently pass his genes on to his offspring. Brock not only had quite the extensive list of great attributes he could pass on, but unfortunately he also had quite the list of genetic weaknesses. Brock's weaknesses included poor eyesight, poor immune system, and a slow awkward gait. He also wasn't very skilled at searching for and finding prey. With his mixture of both amazingly valuable positive attributes and glaringly obvious weaknesses, it was very important that I carefully selected the females that I bred to Brock so as to hopefully offset his considerable weaknesses while trying not to lose his amazing strengths in the process. Brock's first breeding was to a mink named Maher, and unfortunately this breeding produced a lot more of Brock's weaknesses than it did strengths. His son Bear was the only mink in the litter that ended up being worth breeding to. Bear was incredibly similar to his father in both his strengths and his weaknesses. So the next year when I bred Brock again, I decided to take a gamble and breed him to his polar opposite, a quick little female named Rio. Rio basically had strengths where Brock had weaknesses, and weaknesses where Brock had strengths. Rio's strengths included being incredibly quick and agile, having great eyesight, being naturally talented at locating prey, and possessing a good solid immune system. 
Rio's one glaring weakness is what crippled her as a hunting mink. She was lacking in the areas of confidence and prey drive. Unlike Brock's almost suicidally brave attitude, Rio is consistently nervous and lacks the confidence necessary to hunt and kill large intimidating prey like muskrats. Breeding these two polar opposite mink was a real gamble as there's no way to know what traits the offspring were going to inherit. In crazy outcrosses such as these, you could easily end up with the worst of both worlds as you could with the best of both worlds. Or another possible outcome is you might create a bunch of mediocre mink who may not be possess any of their parents' weaknesses but also none of their strengths. So that season I bred Brock to Rio and also another rather quick and agile mink named Taz. The result from both breedings were spectacular. The Brock and Taz breeding created a nice litter of kits. The best of which was an awesome mink I named Houdini. Now Houdini was unique among the Brock's sons. All of Brock's sons have looked like Brock. Stocky, powerful, and kind of awkward. They're not very quick. Uh, they're not very nimble. <laughs> they're just kind of bulldoggy. They're, they're not the best hunters as far as figuring out where the mink went or muskrat went when they're hunting, things like that. They're, they have a really good, really good, good, good qualities in that they're super confident and, and just amazing, like, go in there and get it. And that's what I loved about Brock, and that's what I've loved about his son, Bear. Bear's just like that. Go in there and get it and just be powerful. But the minute things get, like, technical and he's got to be clever or he's got to be quick and nimble, not really a strong point for Bear or his dad, Brock. Mr. Houdini is the first son of Brock who is both confident and brave and go get him just like their dad. Also, I, I may add, Brock and his sons are also very calm and easy to handle. They're, they're not aggressive towards humans. Though they're really go get them when it comes to hunting, they're very nice and calm to handle and be around. Well, Mr. Houdini, he, uh, his mother Taz, tended to throw very clever, very quick, rather quick, rather athletic babies. And he ended up having the best of both worlds. So Mr. Houdini is quick and nimble, more like his mom's side but he's got super confidence and bravery from his dad's side. Okay, so the moment of truth has finally arrived. I am so thrilled. So the number one most exciting litter for me this year was the Rio Houdini litter. I've been so excited to see what she produces. Um, last year was the same thing. I was super excited about the Rio Brock litter and last year's litter proved to be wonderful. So I'm really excited this year to see what the Rio Houdini cross creates. This is little baby Boone, and he's the baby I have chosen from the Rio and Houdini litter. For the first month of his life, Boone will stay with his mother and siblings. I would love to take him younger and bottle race him, but there are a lot of health and developmental benefits for mammals to be raised on their own mother's milk, rather than an artificial man-made formula. For one, the nutritional content of a man-made formula is never exactly the same as the natural milk provided by the baby's mother. Regardless of how advanced our technologies become or how careful our milk replacement formulas are made, they could never replicate a mother's milk nutritionally speaking. This is because a mother's milk is gradually changing to fit the nutritional needs of her growing offspring, not just sitting stagnant the way artificial formula does. As Rio's lactation period progresses, both the protein and fat content will gradually increase as Boone and his siblings grow and develop. So getting just the right amount of fat and protein in the milk replacement formula is a moving target that would be impossible to replicate perfectly. Also, the milk Rio feeds her babies is more than just a mixture of fats and proteins and other nutrients. It's also a mixture of hormones and antibodies, which helps Boone and his siblings to develop properly as well as give them a good strong immune system while they're still young and fragile. For this reason, I have chosen to leave Boone with his mother for as long as possible. However, though I want as much of Boone's development as possible to be fueled by Rio's milk, I also want to begin hand raising him early enough that he can create a special bond with me. So when Boone turned five weeks old, I took the place of his mother and moved him into the house so he could be raised by our family. Since at that age most of Boone's nutritional needs are actually provided by solid foods rather than his mother's milk, feeding him an artificial formula along with his meat for the last week before his weaning will have little to no impact on his growth or development. 
If you guys haven't already noticed, I often put a lot of thought and effort into naming most of my animals. I also do my best to have some sort of meaning that goes along with the name, which fits the particular animal in question. For example, Shirni means tigress in Hindi, and she was given that name because of her confident attitude and her tiger-striped appearance of her brindle coat. I named a spunky red mink Washushe, which essentially means brave to the point of insanity in the Omaha Native American language. I named this mink Washushe due to his recklessly aggressive behavior when I picked him out at the farm. As you would expect, I also put a lot of time and effort into naming Boone. There are actually multiple reasons of why I chose the name Boone. The first, and by far the most significant reason, being the actual definition of the word. I originally learned the definition of the word from one of the hymns we sing at church. That this boon to mortals given may unite my soul with heaven. This got me thinking, what the heck is a boon? And why is it being given to mortals? And how is it uniting anyone with heaven? When I looked up the definition of the word, it all made sense. Boon, noun, something to be thankful for, a blessing, a benefit. Something that is asked for or a favor sought. After looking up the definition of the word boon, the song made so much more sense. Prayer was the gift or boon that was given to mortals to help them feel closer to heaven and their heavenly father. The meaning of this word stuck with me for years after learning its definition. And when the time came that I was pondering on a name for this new little mink, the idea hit me to name my new mink Boone. Ever since I lost my mink Fang several years ago, I've been longing to yet again have another special relationship with a special hunting mink. A mink who I loved and who loved me in return. A mink who was not just a good friend, but also a great hunting partner. A mink who their goals were my goals, and we would go out united with a purpose, hunting together as one, me helping the mink while the mink helps me, gathering muskrats and other prey the way mink's ancestors have been doing since the beginning of time, except this time with a human buddy along for the adventure. That was how Fang and I worked for years, as one united entity until the day came that I lost her, and our unity was permanently disrupted. Since that day, I have been longing for a similar unity, and I've put a considerable amount of effort into trying to create a mink-like fang through careful breeding. Along with my own efforts, I have also put a lot of prayer into it, asking the Lord to bless me with a mink that would be both a great hunter and a great friend. With the birth of this Rio and Houdini litter, I felt that finally, the mink I had been working and praying for had been born. Now it was up to me to devote the time and effort necessary to build that special relationship with that special mink. And so the name I gave this special little mink was Boon, or essentially a gift from heaven. Along with the deeper meaning of the name, the word Boon conjures up thoughts of wilderness as in the word boonies or boondocks, which essentially means a remote wilderness area. The word Boon also brings to mind Daniel Boon, the famous frontiersman. And so with both its spiritual meaning and its rugged outdoor feeling, I settled on the name Boone for my new little mink. My hope and prayer is that he will grow into his name and that in time he will become a wonderful hunting companion and special friend. I can hear